Greetings to you, greetings to you, greetings to you, everyone. God will bless us in our worship. He will guide us, He will bless us. We are here in His presence. We are one with God's love. Greetings to you, greetings to you, greetings to you, everyone. everyone and welcome to World Day of Prayer 2021. I take this opportunity to acknowledge the World Day of Prayer International Committee and World Day of Prayer Vanuatu Committee for the welcome introduction to the 2021 World Day of Prayer worship service that we just watched. And now we are presenting Marthoma Suvishesh Seviga Sangam, North American Europe Diocese first ever diocesan level World Day of Prayer celebration. This program is unique in that we have incorporated 122 participants from about 40 to 45 parishes in this diocese. Every region in this diocese is represented. A large number of people worked extremely hard behind the scenes and you will only see limited faces here. Worship services has ethnic elements incorporated. Different generations are represented here, includes children, young women, and older women, and done in a virtual platform with live and recorded programs combined, a much more tedious job than we envisioned. To honor the women of Vanuatu, you will notice that we have selected the color green from the Vanuatu flag to wear for today's program. Our only claim for today's program is nothing other than full, full reliance on God's grace. Please bear with us. Hope you will be edified. Now, we will open the program with prayer by Reverend Aju Abraham, Diocesan Secretary of North American Europe of the Marthama Church. Aju Achen. Let's pray. Our loving parent, thank you for this blessed time. We thank you and adore you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity to conduct this World Day of Prayer through this virtual platform. We pray for the country of Anuatu, especially we pray for the women in that country. Lord, establish peace, justice and equality in that country and around this world. We continue to seek your blessings. May our prayerful actions help them to realize the love of God and enable them to trust God. Help them to build their faith on a strong foundation. Lord, we come to your presence. Help us to worship you and meditate you and pray for the value of the people based on chapter Matthew chapter 7. May your presence be with us. We pray for all the people who are working behind this program. We pray for all the people who are watching it. We pray for Isaac Mar Felix Nostermeni. We pray for the diocesan Sevika Sangam who initiate to conduct this World Day of Prayer. May your presence speak with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, worship, welcome, and introduction is by Mrs. Nino Thomas. Nino Kajima. World Day of Prayer is a global ecumenical movement of Christian women in 170 countries coming together to observe a common day of prayer and action during the first week in March. Each year, a different country serves as a writer of the WDP worship service, interpreting the Bible in their own context and lifting up issues of mission, justice, and peace that are important to them. The WDP motto is informed prayer, 
prayerful action. World Day of Prayer USA promotes justice and equality for women through prayer, partnerships, service, and celebration. Each year, a different country serves as the writer. In the previous years, we have participated in worship services that are written by women of different countries and cultures, including France, Egypt, Bahamas, Philippines, Suriname, Slovenia, and Zimbabwe. In 2021, the World Day of Prayer Committee chose the theme, Build on a Strong Foundation, based mm -hmm. on Matthew chapter seven, verse 24 through 27. The women of Vanuatu welcome you to World Day of Prayer 2021. Long Island Martha Church Choir will lead us in the opening song, Studipin Nathani.
Light symbolizes the holy God. Light signifies God's presence and favor. Asatoma Satgameya, Tamasoma Jyodirgameya. Let light, let's pray that God will lead us from untruth to truth and from darkness to light. I invite Right Reverend Dr. Isaac Marfiliksinos, our diocesan bishop, to light the lamp as we begin our worship service, followed by Kalma and the worship order. You will see Manju Kochima, Manojachin's wife, Nini Kochima, Ajwachin's wife, and Shirley, Saji's wife, will assist the many as the women representatives to light the lamp. Jesus, the light of the world, shine on us. In the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forever. Amen. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is his name for us, and is come again in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, O mighty Lord. Holy art thou, O immortal Lord. O Lord, the Messiah, who has restored us, have mercy on us. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, O mighty Lord. Holy art thou, O immortal Lord. O Lord, the Messiah, who has restored us, have mercy on us. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, O mighty Lord. Holy art thou, O immortal Lord. O Lord, the Messiah, who has spared us, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have compassion and mercy upon us. Lord, accept our praise and worship and have mercy upon us. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, O Creator of all. Glory to you, O King, the Messiah. World Day of Prayer, prepared by the Christian Women of the Republic of Vanuatu. We welcome our sisters and brothers around the world in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mostly Melanesian people, but also minorities of Polynesian origin, are the source of Vanuatu's culture, languages, traditional values, and spirituality. Vanuatu's islands are known for their black and white sandy beaches, coral reefs with colored fishes, lovely birds, fruits and nuts in the forest. The environment is breathtaking as much for its beauty as for its vulnerability to frequent tropical storms, earthquakes, cyclones, tsunamis and active volcanoes. Each island and village used to have its own chief and style of governance, its own gods and its own language. Women and men would come together at the ferry to discuss and decide major issues. 
Vanuatu is a small country in the Southwest Pacific, a republic formed after the independence in 1980 from a French and British condominium government. Today, Vanuatu proudly waves its flag for anyone to read in God We Stand. Call to Worship Let's read the first verse of Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds a house, those who build labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the God keeps watch in vain. Happy is everyone who trusts the house builder, God. Amen. Prayer of Thanksgiving Jeeva Tilepicha Ella Anigrahangal Kaim Nanmagal Kaim Namukka Devatina Nanmi Kareta Manoharemaya Prabhanja Thaim Adurula Sagala Thaim Avuchitsu Thoda Srishti Chavanam than the general quendi, endum nila volunuinum, snake a sambuna nimaya, pursuta pidave, nyangalange, asre came, ange aradi came chaino. Namakala do remiss the chair of the parayam. Logoth in the vivida pangal lirina, nyangalange, studi came, mahatam kareti game chaino. Akira loga pratana dinatil, loga membard mulla sahodri maro donicha, Sandosha garemaya kuta ima pangadan, levicha krebal kai. Deva me, Nangal Dinaka, Nani Arpikino. Purimis Chernavariam, Kartave, Parasperam Snehikan, Nangale Sahai Kaname. Kartave, Nangala Jiva Tiluda Nilam, Angan Algas Restaum, Alpha the Garo Maya Daningal Kai, Nani Garetuno. Out of the Srishti Vaipaote, Adeala Pertuna, Manohra Maya Madru Rajate, Venda with the Til Paribalikan or Lakarivum, Nyanavum, Aravum. Adigarum, Nangal Kanal Ganame. Urimichi Chernavariam. Nangal Devat in the Udata Sristio de Kaili Vijaragarana. Autravata, Hangia in the Ravetan, Nangalesa Hai Kaname. One of two debile, Halabu Ishtamaya Pupradeshatinaim, Shuta Vayuanaim, Manohremaya Suri Pragashatinaim, Nila Kadalical Kaim, Tadagangal Kaim, Devame, Nangal Nandi Parinum. Urimichi Chernavariam. Nata. Ninda Sreshta Maya Karaviridine, Utkoshik in the Dinum, Nani Lavara Jivik in the Inum, Nangale Ideakaname Mathramula Ganimal Alabik in the Pakshigal, Vivida Zaratilula Sabdangal Purpur Vik in the Mrega Jalangal, Niguda the Gul Uli Lulpik in the Mile Singal, Ingen a Vaiviki Marna, Arthapurna Mai Sreshtical Kai, Deva Me Nani Sreshti Ninakula Mahatu Tayim, Atigaratim, Vilipatan, the Manoharema, Velichartangal Kai, Yangal Ninikan, Nani Varetano, Namakurimis Jerna, Samathanathan went in Nilevulu and went a Deva Krubim, Paritiano, Abudna, Yangal Kanal Ganame Kunyangal, Yangal de Partival Ludaim, Punjigal Ludaim, Arpu Viligal Ludaim, Praya Maya Vimi Avenakarim, Avadaganangal Ludaim, Prathanagal Ludaim, then the Snehate Sandoshaburum, Uyati Kartanai, Yangal Ninikan, Nani Vareno. Namakurimis Jerna, Deva me, Studis Totra Behumanangalka, Yendum Angu Matramani Yogin, Jeeva Dada Vaya Kartave, Yangalda Studi, Ninaka Prasada Gario, Suigario Maidikanami. Year of Confession. Let's confess to God, who is faithful and just, asking God to forgive us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We stand before you to confess our sins. We confess that we have listened to your word but have not acted on it. We do the things we should not do and leave undone the things we should do. We face adversities and challenges in our homes and nations. We try to build our homes in the words of Jesus Christ, but discover too often we have built on the sand. We want to be changed. Restore us so we may do what is right and just. We confess our wrongdoings and ask you for courage to change. With your forgiveness, in your grace, hear our prayer. Creator God, we confess that we have polluted the environment and harmed the sea creatures by throwing garbage into their habitats. We endanger the marine life and ruin sustainable livelihoods. We know we can change it. Grant us compassion to help those who are suffering. There is a lack of integrity in our lives. We fail to love and to unite those who are divided for reasons of ethnicity, language, or political views. God, forgive us and heal our hearts and minds. We regret, confess, and commit to fulfill the mandate to be good stewards of your creation. God, hear our prayers. 
square of intersection. Younger day again, Astray, my Nithin, I they may. Out of the Sunday, he lake a young Adatuverno. One year to another young Ladiba Samohate, Adil Vasik in a genang lame, out of the Karangal summer picking no. E. Deshatum, Kudumbangalum, Samathana Vahura in the Lavulavan, young lace a high caname. You would take her Nadi Garigalayum, Nedak and Mareum, or the Prathikino. Pidave, Ninila Sreja, Viveka told a genangal and Ipan, our race a high caramana, Amyo de Yangal, a big chicken. No, Natha Loga Manganada Madana, Ani deal Kedre Provotikiman, Yangal is a high caname. E. Deshatum. Samo here thin mal kadre poor adwan, they were men young lay a prop the rakaname. One new twilum, Logam embarda mulla, Matti rajingulum, Katha sochikina, Wamshio, Samskari yo, my a wavy thing al kadail, Aikidirum, Snehatilum, Samathan at the injivikiva, Anga young lay a sahai caname. Pidave. Younger the Bentangale, Sneham, Samadhanam, Sandosham, Iveal, Ushmalamak and Main. Churli Kater, Bugambam, Akni Baravadam, Todangi, Pradi Duranda, Sadida, Pradeshingle Tam Sikina Janangale, Kartave, Audana, Sandeshik and Main. Paladaratrulla, Vinashagaramaya, Astiyalka, Adimal Ivere Kurchula, Younger the Ashen Girl. Out of the sunny deal, power in noon. Our order, carry the lodum, snake a todum, it over the wine, young less high can man. Sarusectana de me, be the pertana, rarely durandangal in them, casta particle in them, young lay, cartu berivari can man. Manantarna vere, ashusipiquanum, adilude, ninda snakeum, avery lake a power divinum, out in the Yangle, Sai can me. Amen. Let us hear the word of God according to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. The main Bible text for this year's World Day of Prayer is based on the teachings of Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27, specifically his instructions for entering the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' concern for the crowd that gathered to hear him speak was teaching them about God and how to live better lives. Let us rise and build our homes, our nations, and the world on the words of Jesus, who reminded us about the golden rule. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. Chapter 7, verse 12. This is our solid foundation. The money collected through the World Day of Prayer service is used to perpetuate the work of the World Day of Prayer, which includes humanitarian efforts focusing on women and children as well as arranging World Day of Prayer services and bringing awareness. The writer country for the World Day of Prayer 2021, Vanuatu, hopes for reduction in gender gap in literacy and equal opportunities for girls. They have brought up the health needs of women and children. Malnutrition is a growing problem in Vanuatu, accounting for most of the deaths of children under age five. Violence affects approximately 60% of the girls in Vanuatu. Safe drinking water and adequate sanitation are major concerns in Vanuatu. 
The offertory collected goes to funding non-profit organizations in Vanuatu, United States, and worldwide. We ask you to give generously in response to the call of Jesus in everything do to others as you would have them do to you and act as wise witnesses of God's blessings. Your contributions can be mailed independently or can be collected as local church seviga sangams and mailed to the World Day of Prayer USA. Thank you. God is looking for a resting place. Where is the house you will build for God? Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. We come before you, God, and pray you will grant us your wisdom and knowledge. Teach us to discern the truth. Lead and guide us to live in a way that is pleasing and acceptable to you. Humbly, we offer ourselves to be a house where you can dwell by the power of your word. Transform our lives and our nations. Make us like a household of justice and peace. Let us all join together and say, Gracious God, accept our commitment. Sending and Blessing we welcome God's dwelling presence in and with us. Let God guide you, lead you, restore you, and heal your nation. Let God's will be done in your house as it is in heaven. Remember, as you go out, everyone who hears the words of Jesus and acts on them will be like a wise person and their house will withstand the floods. Go and build your house on Jesus' words. Let us go home with these blessings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Let us all join together and say, This is our strong foundation. We will follow Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Thank you, Tirumeni and the worship team for a well, job well done. Now, the Vice President of the Diocese in Sebi Gassankam, Reverend Shibi Verghese, will address the audience and welcome everyone. Shibi Achan. Yes. Good morning, respected Diocesan Bishop, Right Reverend Dr. Isaac Ma Felix Nos Tirmeni, Reverend Ajay Abraham, Diocesan Secretary, Reverend Manoj Edikulachan, all Achans who are participating in this World Day of Prayer conducted by Diocesan Sevia Sangam, and our dignitaries, Andrea Misko, Rosengela Oliveria, and Nidhi Prasad Kuchama, Diocesan Secretary Suma Chako, and the greetings we are bringing from NCCI, Eliama Thomas Lina, and all the participants and guests who are in this meeting. Let me praise God for the wonderful and the exciting moment that God has given us today to worship the Lord in the name of World Day of Prayer and remembering the great island of Vanuatu. The World Day of Prayer, as we all know, is a communical movement globally, which brings different Christian traditions to observe a common day of prayer each year. And it is also a great global ecumenical movement who stood for the right and justice of women, irrespective of caste, gender, and creed. The motto of the World Day of Prayer is informed prayer and prayerful action. Through our participation in the world of prayer, we affirm that prayer and action are inseparable and that both have immeasurable influence on the world. As Rowan Williams, bishop, theologian, and poet, former Archbishop of Canterbury, defines prayer as growing prayer is a growing into the kind of humanity that Christ has showed us. Growing in prayer is growing in Christian humanity. 
let me once again say, growing in prayer is growing into the kind of humanity that Christ has showed us. Growing in prayer is growing in Christian humanity. The famous American poet, Elia Wheeler Wilcox, has said like this, prayer without deed is an arrow without bowstring, and a deed without prayer is a bowstring without an arrow. So, and how deep together, together all boundaries and gather together in prayer. Through our prayer, participation and preparation in this service and in this meeting, we try to learn uh, and listen to the stories of our sisters from different countries, languages, and cultures. Today, we come together to hear the stories of women who have been excluded and listen to the fear of chi children and learn to understand the context of multi-ethnic, multicultural, and multi-faith society, especially focusing on the people, the women at the island of Vanuatu. In the midst of all uncertainties, we are living under the pandemic of COVID-19. The World Day of Prayer theme emerges like a bomb of confidence. As we have referred already now, St. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27, Jesus tells about the story of the kingdom of heaven using the image of a house and the land on which the house is built. In Jesus' story, the wisdom of the builder of the house comes from hearing and acting on the word of God, which is the word of love. This is the foundation on which our sisters calls us to build our homes, our nations, and our world beyond all hatred and contempt that is flourishing these days. Let us look to the Lord and pray together that we will be able to surpass all boundaries that has broken the humanity and wounded the psyche of humanity. As Rowan Williams has said, let us pray so that we can grow in the humanity that Christ has showed us. Today, our meeting is inaugurated and the presidential address will be given by Right Reverend Dr. Isaac Mar Philoxenos, Diocesan Bishop of North America and Europe of the Martama Church. Bishop Thirmeni is giving prestigious leadership to the diocese with exemplary vision and varied experiences. Thirmeni initiated and became an instrument of God in the establishment of different institutions within the church to cater to the needs and the demands of the mission. The institutions like the Theological College, Dharma Jodhi Vidya Pid, New Delhi, uh, the Navajeevan Mumbai, and the latest addition to it is the Carmel Marthoma Center, Atlanta. As a member of different ecumenical bodies, including WCC, Thirmeni is spearheading different theological and ecumenical discussions in the WCC and other ecumenical fraternities. As president of Diocesan Sevia Sangam, Thirmeni is leading each one of us and guiding all activities of Diocesan Sevia Sangam. Being a man of God with the spirit and soul of ecumenism, Bishop Wright Reverend Dr. Isaac Mar Philoxenos Thirmeni always enlightened us with words of wisdom and knowledge. On behalf of all participants, Sevia Sangam members, Sevia Sangam Diocesan Council, Achens, and Gust assembled in this meeting, I humbly welcome our dear Thirmeni, Right Reverend Dr. Isaac Mar Philoxenos. Episcopa to the World Day of Prayer meeting. Our meeting, we have the felicitation from Andrea Misco, Executive Direct Coordinator of World Day of Prayer USA. And we have with us Rosangelia Oliveria, Executive Director, World Day of Prayer International Committee. Oliveria is an ordained minister of the Methodist Church in Brazil. She is World Day of Prayer International Committee Executive Direct Director since 200 and 2012. After serving in the United Methodist Women as Regional Missionary for Latin America for 10 years, I wholeheartedly welcome both Andrea Misco and Rosangela Oliveria 
to our World Day of Prayer meeting. Today, our devotion will be led by Dr. Annie Philip Jacob, member of Greater Church of Washington of Mathematics. She's an environmental scientist who has PhD in evolution, ecology, and organization biology from Ohio State University. And she is a great leader of the parish. I welcome Dr. Annie Philip Jacob to our midst and she is prepared with the devotion. Ms. Eliama Thomas Lena, Vice President of NCCI, National Council of Churches in India. She brings greetings, active member and leader of the Matoma Church among women, and she holds the Vice President position from 2015. Presently, board of member of ISPC Indian Society for the promotion of Christian knowledge. She holds a postgraduate from Madras University and possesses a degree in theology from Sarambur University also. She did a course on human rights and human dignity from Bose Institute, Switzerland, under the World Council of Churches. In addition, she did a half credit course in counseling from Nobel. Nobel Laureate Bishop Desmond Tutu's Institute of Healing Memor Memories under the Western Cape University, South Africa. I welcome Lena, who brings greetings from NCCI to this World Day of Prayer meeting conducted by Diocesan Sevilla Sangha. We have every time with us our Niti Prasad Kochama, who is representing Matoma Syrian Church in the Board of Directors of World Day of Prayer. I welcome Kochama to our meeting. Our opening prayer was led by Reverend Aju Abrahamachan, Diocesan Secretary, and our uh, closing prayer will be done by Reverend Manoj Dukulachan. Ajuachan is the Diocesan Secretary, and Manoj Achan was previous our Diocesan Secretary. Both Achans stand firm in all endeavors of Sevia Sangam and support Sevia Sangam. We welcome both Achans to this meeting. We have our Diocesan Council members, Diocesan Secretary Soma Chako, Diocesan Council members, Nobi J. Baiju Trashar, Jolie Babu, and we have a lot of people involved in the setting of this great meeting. I welcome all of you, including Nirmala Abraham, Riyama Abraham, all to our meeting, and also welcome all participants, Sevilla Sangha members, from the diocese and all the guests from different countries and different time zone. Let us all join our hands and hearts together so that we can bring great glory to God through our prayer and action. May God bless us all. Thank you. I would like to invite Cordeline White, our diocesan bishop and president of the Seviga Sangam, to deliver the presidential address based on the theme building on a strong foundation. Tidimani. Dearly beloved in Christ, greetings to all. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're very happy to join together for the World Day of Prayer. Remembering the women and especially praying for the women and children at various parts of the universe. I appreciate the Diocese of Sevilla Sankham, the Women's Department of the Diocese of North America and Europe for the Martama Church for organizing this online prayer fellowship. The leadership of the Sevilla Sangham, Mrs. Suma Chako, the secretary, Mrs. Nobi Baiju, the treasurer, Mrs. Jolly Babu, the council member, were guided by Reverend Shibi Vargis, the vice president, need to be acknowledged. Glad to have the participation from women leaders from different parts of the world in this prayer service. 
We do appreciate especially Andrea and Rosangela and Dr. Annie Philip and Nidhi Prasad for your participation in this prayer meeting. Mrs. Selena Thomas, Vice President of National Council of Charities of India, is also participating. We acknowledge her presence and thank God for his committed service to the Lord. The women in leadership achieving an equal position is very much debated these days. The gender equality and women's empowerment around the world is a matter of significance. Many point out the need for the church to attend the voice from the margins and a woman's eclipsed theological voice. It may sometimes disrupt the theological order and meaning and celebrates difference as it moves and dances on the border of time and space. These days, especially the perceptions of racism that women of color as well as ethnic groups experience raises the concern about human survival and quality of life for the oppressed with the principles of justice and prophetic challenge. Violence against women and children and racial discrimination are two evils even the so-called civilized society need to address. At this time, we grieve for the women of Asian descent who have lost their lives in Atlanta on this Wednesday. There is a heightened level of discriminations and racist attack in, in many places in this country and elsewhere. The National Council of Churches in USA, the statement made it clear, in order to end a racism, we must dedicate ourselves to changing the hearts and minds and behaviors of people in our churches and society to bring healing and wholeness to all. The World Council of Churches has invited its member churches and partners across the world to observe the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination on 21st March and join in prayer. That is tomorrow. It's a special day as the International Day we are celebrating. Jesus Christ is the very foundation of life. The theme built on the strong foundation helps us to see life in its fullness, rooted in Christ, and that brings new life to everyone and help to build on Christ to face the realities of life. It helps the faithful to hold on to the faith in the Lord. It helps the child of God to rely on the power of God and it gives the power of resilience and resistance. In the midst of the atrocities and hardships the power of God helps to keep one firm and strong. The COVID pandemic taught us many lessons. With courage and confidence, how to overcome the unforeseen misery and pain. Yes, many faced 
uncertain times. But God always took care of us. And God's divine providence everyone experienced. Along with the women of one or two, the women all over the world could say, the Lord is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Let us build our life on this faith affirmation. The words of St. Augustine is very appropriate. Lord, you have created us for yourself. Our hearts are restless till they find its rest in you. We listen to the word of God. We need to do the will of God. Life built on the very foundation of Christ will always help us to face the odds in life. Last one year, the pandemic has shattered our hopes. Yet God protected and helped to survive. Look to the Lord and see the light. Jesus, the very foundation, is our stronghold. Let us live with Christ, move with Christ, and have our being in Christ. May God bless everyone who participate in this prayer service, and God's name be glorified. Thank you, dear Tirmeni. Um, now, Mrs. Nirmala Abraham will take us an exciting journey to Vanuatu. Please enjoy a lively, entertaining presentation on the focus country of Vanuatu. Greetings. Let's go on a journey to the country of Vanuatu. Let's visit our sisters and hear their stories. Stories of trials, stories of triumphs. As Martoma women, let us hold them in our prayers and in our actions. The Republic of Vanuatu is made up of a group of 80 islands near Australia in the South Pacific Ocean. It is a small country about the size of Connecticut with a population around 300,000. It is a beautiful tropical country with blue skies, rainforest, sandy beaches, coral reefs, multicolored fish, and other features that makes it a very popular tourist destination. The name Vanuatu comes from the two Melanesian words. Vanua meaning land and two meaning to remain. The people of Vanuatu are frequently, they frequently experience destruction of their land through natural disasters. So the word Vanuatu, which means remaining on the land is not just symbolic, it's a matter of survival. Now let us look at some of the challenges facing this country. One of the challenges is the increase in the number and intensity of natural disasters. Global warming has affected the weather patterns. 
Currently, there are more frequent earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, cyclones, hurricanes, tsunamis, rising sea levels, and erosion of the land. And the list goes on. I want to point to you the, the rising sea levels and the erosion of the land is particularly significant when you live in islands in the ocean, because globally we have seen some of the islands slowly sinking. And this is really a disaster for their inhabitants. Another challenge is the increase in gender-based violence. About 60% of women experience domestic violence each year. The Constitution does have provision for equal rights for men and women. But women are not in any elected positions in the government. So far, I have given you a very brief overview of the country and the people. Now let's get ready to do an extensive virtual tour of the sights and sounds of the Republic of Vanuatu. Enjoy the journey. Vanuatu, meaning country that stands up, is a Y-shaped collection of over 80 islands in the South Pacific Ocean. Australia lies to the west. Inhabitants are known as Ni Vanuatu. Most of these 310,000 residents are rural. Many are of Melanesian descent with a Polynesian minority. Port Vila is the largest city with 45,000 residents. Vanuatu people use just under 100 dialects. Children usually start with their village language or Bislama. English and French are used for school instruction. Vanuatu's flag is green, yellow, black, and red. These colors stand for vegetation, gospel light, the people, and the blood of boars and men. The emblem consists of boar tusks, and crossed namale leaves symbolizing peace. Vanuatu has a tropical humid climate moderated by trade winds between May and October. Temperatures in the northern islands average 27 degrees Celsius with an annual rainfall of about 3,000 millimeters. Common natural disasters include earthquakes, cyclones, and volcanic eruptions. Rising sea levels threaten to erode the land. The World Day of Prayer artwork created by Vanuatuan artist Juliette Pita, illustrates the weather and the resiliency of the people. The painting shows a mother bending and praying over her child during Cyclone Pam in 2015. The waves crash over her, but a palm tree with strong roots bends protectively. Three quarters of these mountainous islands, outlined with narrow coastal plains, are covered by natural vegetation. Primary lower forests include tropical lowland evergreens, and small areas of broad-leaved deciduous. The giant banyan tree on Tana Island is one of the largest trees in the world. Less than 2% of the land is arable and is used primarily for cattle grazing and cash crops rather than vegetable gardens. This has contributed to malnutrition. Hibiscus, the unofficial flower of Vanuatu, is plentiful. Bats are the only native mammals. An interesting Vanuatu bird is the megapode, which lays its eggs in hot volcanic soil. Its young, which emerge fully feathered, can run immediately and fly within 24 hours. Sanctuaries have been created for turtles to restore their dwindling population. Colorful schools of small fish are a feature in many coral gardens and reefs. Nearby large fish include bonito, yellowfin tuna, and sailfish. Staple foods include yam, taro, banana, coconut, sugarcane, tropical nuts, greens, pork, fowl, and seafood. The national ceremonial dish is lap lap. It is a pudding made of grated root crops or plantain mixed with coconut milk and sometimes greens and meat and wrapped in leaves. Vanuatu ancestors lived on their own islands in their own villages. Each had their own government, languages, food, styles of clothing, traditional healers, and midwives. Homes had thatched roofs. 
Although people had been living on the islands for 3,000 years, in 1774, Captain James Cook named the islands New Hebrides, as they reminded him of his Scottish homelands. Blackbirding was prevalent between 1847 and 1904. South Pacific Islanders were kidnapped, tricked, or coerced into working for very little or no pay on plantations in Queensland, Fiji, and Hawaii. By 1906, New Hebrides became a colony with a more centralized government ruled jointly by Great Britain and France. Political independence and a homegrown constitution were established in 1980. Vanuatu has a literacy rate of 64%. Secondary education enrollment was 35% in 2015. There are strategies to increase this figure significantly by 2030. Vanuatu's economy is largely based on tourism, construction, and offshore financial services. Big hotels and resorts are owned by foreigners. A minor income-earning activity is Nagol which involves men climbing flimsy 100-foot towers and diving headfirst into empty space with nothing to break their fall but vines tied to their ankles. Others sell their traditional weaving. Manufacturing industries contribute only 5 to 9 percent of the gross domestic product. Education curriculum points youth to white-collar jobs. In the current Vanuatu democracy, the Constitution provides for gender equity, but there is limited political will to implement it. In the 2020 federal election, no women were voted into power. Women represent 40% of the labor force in both public and private sectors and are often the primary caregivers for family members. Gender-based violence is a serious issue affecting women and girls. Approximately 60% of women in Vanuatu have experienced some form of physical and or sexual violence. Access to healthy foods, safe drinking water, and adequate sanitation are concerns, especially for children in many areas of this republic. Most deaths in those under five years of age are due to malnutrition. There has also been an increase in stunted growth and development in children. Before the arrival of Christian missionaries in the 19th century, each island had its own god. They believed there was a creator somewhere in the heavens, and sacrifices were offered to that being. Christianity is now the major religion at 83%. World Day of Prayer was introduced to Vanuatu by two female Canadian missionaries in 1946. Current focuses are employment and educational opportunities for young rural women, maternal and children's health, and cancer. In 2021, we pray with all Vanuatu women. to arise and build on the strong foundation now. One want to arise and build on the strong foundation now. One want to arise and build on the strong foundation now. Jesus, the strong Thank you, Mrs. Nirmala Abraham, for that elaborate journey through Vanuatu. We stand on Christ the solid rock. Here is the theme song sung by a virtual choir of 34 women, representing 30 parishes from the Diocese of North America and Europe. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now we will hear felicitations from Ms. Andrea Misko, Executive Coordinator of World Day of Prayer USA, Rosangela Oliveria, Executive Director, World Day of Prayer International Committee, and Mrs. Neeti Prasad, Board Member, World Day of Prayer USA. Hello, I'm Andrea Misko. I am the Executive Coordinator of World Day of Prayer USA. I am so pleased to welcome you, but more importantly, to thank you for being a part of this worldwide movement. It is so important to us, and I think more necessary than ever. This year has been so strange and so challenging, especially for people who wish to worship together, that I can only think that perhaps this is the smallest of silver linings in that it has forced us to become more creative and create services like this. So, as you go through the service, let's bear in mind that the women of Vanuatu have created an incredibly lovely worship service for us, and their theme, Build on a Strong Foundation, could not be more timely. I think going forward into this year, it will be more important than ever. Hello, sisters and brothers in Christ, gather here for a World Day of Prayer celebration. I am Rosângela Oliveira, the Executive Director of the World Day of Prayer International Committee. Thanks very much for coming together in this difficult time to pray with women and communities in Vanuatu. I was with them in 2018 to launch the writing process of the worship services materials. Now you have it, you have their prayers, and we are together all over the world to listen to their voices and to respond with our prayers and actions. Every year, the word of prayer theme finds its relevance to our context, built on a strong foundation. It's a faith statement that we need to hear it right now it's an action-oriented thing. We need to get busy building, and we cannot do it alone, even if we are in this pandemic learned isolation. We are reaching out, and this celebration of yours 
is a statement of hope into action. Thanks very much for the invitation. God bless you. Praise be to God. Greetings to you in the pure, precious, and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I bring blessings to you from the World Day of Prayer USA Board. Along with 15 wonderful women of God, I've had the humble opportunity to serve the World Day of Prayer USA Board for the past three years. And by the grace of God, I'm currently serving as a secretary of the board. As I step into my second term of service, I look forward to God's continued guidance and all your valuable and prayerful support. It is with great joy and excitement we wanted to share with you that the World Day of Prayer International Committee and the USA Board is busy praying, preparing and planning for the World Day of Prayer 2022, which will God willingly be observed on March 4th 2022. The country of focus for the year 2022 is England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, EWNI. The theme for the World Day of Prayer 2022 comes from Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 1 to 14, and it is based on the prophecy Jeremiah wrote to the exiles in Babylon. The exiles were in a situation of suffering, uncertainty, and opposing views. Through the World Day of Prayer 2022, we will come together to hear the stories of women who feel excluded. We will listen to the fear of a child refugee and see the context of a multi-ethnic, multicultural, and multi-faith society in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. For Jeremiah, God's plan was clear, and hence the theme for 2022 is I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans I have for you. Also, let me take this time to remind everyone to kindly send a short report about your World Day of Prayer service and celebrations, along with a few pictures, including screenshots from your virtual gatherings. This is for inclusion in the upcoming issue of our Diocesan Messenger. Please send the report as soon as your event has been conducted and kindly send the reports to the email address mentioned on the screen. We are looking forward to hearing from you and also to know more about how your WDP celebration went. We wanna thank each and every one of you for your presence here with us today and most importantly, your prayers. Please continue to remember the mission and ministry of WDP in your prayers. Like today's worship service rightly reminded us, let us follow the exhortation to build on a strong foundation and let us continue to trust God as we anxiously and humbly await to meditate on the next year's theme, I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah 29, 11. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, um, Andrea, Rosanjana, and Nathan Kajima. Uh, now, let's prepare our ears. Good morning. To My morning. name is Rito. I'm from a very small country of Vanuatu. I come from a very poor family of eight, where my father was the sole breadwinner in the family. So he could only afford our basic necessities of our life and education was not one of them. So only my brother could continue with his education and none of the girls could. There was no compulsory requirement from the state or the government either for any sort of formal education. I sincerely wanted to pursue my education, but there was no opportunity. I even wanted to attend some small classes like the sewing classes, but couldn't afford the fees. I was so disheartened. Then I started going to a nearby church and joined the youth ministry and attended their Bible study classes. Later on, I got involved with their women's ministry, which gave me immense confidence. And with the faith in God, I somehow did some of the formal education, 
and acquired some skills to earn a living. Now, I make small items and sell in where we call as Mama's Market, where women like me with little education could earn a living. I can proudly say now I contribute to my family's income and support my kids' education. I praise God for all his blessings and for all the support he has given me throughout all the struggles of my life. I have become wise and strong in God. Please pray for me and for all of us here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Moti. When I was little, my brother and I were raised in a single parent home. When my mother remarried, she left us with our grandparents. Then my father remarried and took us to live with his new family. When my stepmother had more children, her attitude towards us changed. With more mouths to feed and no rooms in the house, I was left to go out in the street for food. I had to live outside in a shack and had to use an old copra sack to protect myself from the cold. One day, some Christians came to me and said that God loved me. It was difficult for me to understand how God could love me in the midst of my suffering, but I decided to trust God. I trusted God that he will get me through my sufferings in spite of my family not taking care of me. This trust in God grew into a foundation of faith in my life. I believe that God is an all-loving and all-providing God. I want to share my story with you so that everyone can learn and know how wonderful our God is, how compassionate and what a great provider he is. I would love for you to pray for me and my country during this time. Hi, and the Jacqueline. One of the twin or Grama Pradeshana and the Vida. Port Villa tourism make Lil Jolly Chenaman Nairano, Cherpa Modele, and the Agraham. Adanayan, Port Ville Lakepoi. Nagaratil, Thomas Saugirim Levicata Dinal, Yan Pranda Pradeshatana, Thomasikunada. Jolica and Yan Sramichapol, Adanim India Parishilam Ilan the Paranonda, Jolly in Kilevichilla. Bakshnathino. Thamas Saugiratino, the rich Vitaliki Pogovano, Eniki Panamilla. Either any Kurchula, the Viga Padadiella, Nyan Mansilacano. Any polyula Eugenical, Jolie Lipkina the Nayam, Vano at Twin de Gramma Pradesh at the Vigasin of Narakana the Namayam, they even get a better day in the Nyan Pratikino. Namaskara, Nyan Monik, Nyan Vanuata in the Richeria Ajatan the Namberno. Vana Matal Gramma Pradeshanil Mikavaram Kutilaka, School in Pova, Valeri Durim Narakenda the Itunda. Chilla Kutikal boarding school in Cherivan, Nanai Chalpada Tane, Vida Vedano. Even a lavakam Vidyapiasam Vedaman and Narban the Mila. School Vidyapiasam, English law, French law, Anna. In the Patanangal Asha Vinime, Tarsamila Nadatuan, Bislama Pasha Vyokino. Gramma Pradeshanil a general. Avade the high partial under School of Ville, Aunt Kutigalcum, Pen Kutigalcum, Tulia Provation Lebicuan, Avishima on the Padadigal, Purogam Chivo Dikino. If it is Jerusalem, you would Edwathan Shadamanum, Thamasik another, Gramma Pradeshan and Lana. Avade Thurilla was rendered Valeri Kuravana. Sampathi and Eternal Coda the Rula Pradeshan and Lake, Kudi Yerge Alade, Palacharpakarcum, Matumargan or Unumilla. Kurani Vidyabias and the Lavaru, Vain Tatra Persilla Milani, Nagarangal, Thodil Lebikivan, 
അവർക്ക് തടസ്സമായി നിൽക്കുന്നു ഉയർന്ന തോതിലുള്ള തൊഴിലില്ലായ്മ ഇവിടെ ചെറുപ്പക്കാർ നേരിടുന്ന ഏറ്റവും വലിയൊരു പ്രശ്നമാണ് അത് അവരുടെ ഭാവിയെ ഇരുളടങ്ങുതാക്കി തീർക്കുന്നു വാലുവാട്ടിലെ ഗ്രാമപ്രദേശങ്ങൾ മെച്ചപ്പെടുത്തുന്നതിനും യുവജനങ്ങൾക്ക് വിദ്യാഭ്യാസം നൽകുന്നതിനും തൊഴിലവസരങ്ങൾ കണ്ടെത്തുന്നതിനും പദ്ധതിയും പരിപാടികളും ആവിഷ്കരിക്കേണ്ടതായിട്ടുണ്ട് പസഫിക് മേഖലയിലെ ഉയർന്ന ജനസംഖ്യാ നിരക്കും ഈ വാനുവാട്ടിലാണ് പോഷകാഹാരക്കുറവ് ഗ്രാമപ്രദേശങ്ങളിലും നഗരങ്ങളിലും ഒരുപോലെ ആശങ്ക പടർത്തുന്നു കൃഷിയിടങ്ങളിൽ ജൈവ കൃഷി പാരമ്പര്യം വളരെ ശക്തമാണെങ്കിലും പാൽപ്പൊടി ജങ്ക് ഫുഡ് എന്നിവ കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങൾക്കും കുട്ടികൾക്കും ഒരുപോലെ കൊടുക്കുന്നത് സർവ്വസാധാരണമാണ് ഇന്ന് ജീവിക്കുവാൻ എന്നെ പോലെ സ്വയം വഴി കണ്ടെത്തേണ്ടി വരുന്ന കുട്ടികൾക്കായി ഞാൻ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ലോകമെമ്പാടുമുള്ള കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങൾ ദൈവസ്നേഹം രുചിച്ചറിയുവാൻ ഇടയാകട്ടെ എന്ന് ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നു അതോടൊപ്പം എല്ലാ കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങൾക്കും പാർക്കുവാൻ ഒരിടം ലഭിക്കുവാൻ ദൈവം സഹായിക്കട്ടെ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുകയും ചെയ്യുന്നു നന്ദി താങ്ക് യു അഞ്ജു അലക്സാണ്ടർ ഷാലിനി പാപ്പിച്ചൻ ഫ്രം ഇമാനുവൽ മാർത്തമ ചർച്ച് ഹ്യൂസ്റ്റൺ ടെക്സസ് ജിൻസി ജോർജ് ഫ്രം ശാലെ മാർത്തമ ചർച്ച് ന്യൂയോർക്ക് and Gigi Matthew Epiphany Martha Church New York for those stories from women of Vanuatu now let's prepare our sauce to listen to Dr Annie Philip Jacob from Washington Martha Church who will be delivering the message based on the theme building on a strong foundation from a woman's point of view Annie thank you Mrs Samachako good morning everyone please bear with me as i share my um screen i hope you can see my slide and hear me okay yes morning greetings to you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ devathinte adhi parishuddha naamam vaarthapadu maravate aadhimaayittaanu ingane oru vedhiyil njan samsaarikkunnathu adinene shaktigiriche enna belapaduthiya devathina njan mahatvam kareyittunu respect to thirumeni achins and my dear sisters and brothers in christ i'm deeply honored and humbled to be part of this first ever suvishesha seviya sagam initiative to celebrate the world day of prayer at the diocese level amidst the challenges of the pandemic and i commend the seviya sagam leadership for going above and beyond to ensure that women of all ages actively participate in this program today as we have heard The focus country for this year's World Day of Prayer is Vanuatu. Today, the women of Vanuatu have a message for us, build on a strong foundation. This is not a randomly chosen theme. Vanuatu is labeled as the most at risk or the most disaster prone country in the world per the UN World Risk Index. And we just heard the earthquakes volcanoes and storms are an everyday reality for its people and i believe that the faith of the people of vanuatu and their interpretation of the word of the god is intrinsically linked to their surroundings to the very land where they live and from their lived experience the women of vanuatu are urging us to build on a strong foundation based on the very family of biblical passage of wise and foolish builders now from vanuatu let's shift our focus to the american mainland sure we are in the midst of a pandemic that has already already claimed more than half a million lives societal unrest and political divisiveness are at an all time high but as followers of christ there's a much greater threat looming around us according to the 2020 american worldview inventory one third of the nation's adults have chose to dismiss traditional teachings about god even the importance of determining whether a holy creator god exists to me this is the paramount existential crisis of our era more than covid-19 or predicted climate change impacts pew research center a non-partisan fact tank based in dc published a report in 2019 the title itself is a stark warning in us the decline of christianity continues at rapid pace 
The graph here is based on a survey conducted by the University of Chicago. A quarter of the population currently is unaffiliated to any religion, referred to as none, this red line here in the graph, with predicted steady increase in, the, in this group in the years to come. Simultaneously, major Christian groups are experiencing losses of population share. Now, these trends are not a complete surprise, given that we live in a postmodern world which rejects all notions of absolute truth. We are told that the truth is relative and it depends on the individual to determine what is true for him or her. And it doesn't take much more than a look at the daily news to know that the moral values of our society are eroding. There's no objective basis of morality. The postmodern society has rejected moral absolutes. Equally damaging tenet is the loss of a meta-narrative. That is, the rejection of the overarching stories that explain and give meaning to life, which means we must piece together of our own understanding of why we are here and where we are going. The painful outcome of all of this, the relevance of the church and the Bible as the foundational source of tr truth and moral guidance are fading away before our own eyes. Will it be an overstatement if I say that the very foundational beliefs of the church are crumbling today? Will it be an overstatement if I say that the very foundational beliefs of the church are crumbling today? We have to pause and ask the same question that the psalmist asked. If the foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? This is a question we need to seriously address now. We have to take a fresh look at our own lives, at our families, at our churches, and do everything we can to reconstruct our moral and spiritual footings. We need to begin rebuilding our foundations. And this begins by going back to the very basics and answering the most fundamental questions. Who we are, whose we are, and why are we here? So rebuilding our foundation begins with reaffirming the absolute authority and sovereignty of God in our lives. Whether we live in a modern or a postmodern world, the Lord is in his holy temple the Lord is on his heavenly throne. God has authority because of who he is and because he created the earth and everything that lives on the earth. We have to reaffirm that in him all things hold together and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Next, to rebuild our foundation, we have to reaffirm our identity in Christ. We know that we are not a cosmic accident. God created us. Unlike the rest of the creation, we have the breath, the very spirit of God. We are his image bearers, his workmanship, his children, his special possession. <laughs> this is our true identity, and this should shape every aspect of our lives. Next, what is our objective purpose? What was our creator's intention in creating us? He created us for his glory. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. The ultimate purpose of man is simply to glorify God in every aspect of our lives. basic foundational concepts But these often remain as our favorite Bible verses or just propositional statements that we all believe. It's not easy, it's a struggle. What I've understood through my personal experiences and my readings is that to integrate these foundational concepts, fundamental concepts of who we are, whose we are, and why are we here into every aspect of our existence, into every fiber of our being, we have to be connected to a bigger story, a story big, and true enough to live by. Let's look at this closely. According to Richard Rohr, a Franciscan priest and a spiritual writer, our lives can be lived within three containers or domes of meaning. The first is called the my story. 
this is yours and my private life where i and my feelings are the center point or reference point for everything where i'm always striving for significance the story is all about me about what i have done done and what others have done to me if we know anything about christ teachings we know that he does not want us to remain trapped inside this lowest level of meaning the second dome of meaning is about us this is the dome of our group our community perhaps our church our nationality or our ethnicity we are all social beings and we live inside of shared meanings today we are all here on zoom because of our group identity as marthamites and there's nothing wrong in identifying with one another but we cannot remain inside of our small cultural world or group identity because of our human frailties often what ends up happening is that we try to spin a story that makes our group better or more unique or more special than the story of other groups it almost always becomes our story versus their story us versus them god wants us wants us to move to transcend these two levels into the third dome the largest level of meaning the story this is the story of the kingdom of god which jesus came to establish and was central to his teachings the story where our lord reigns you and i are characters in the story bearing witness to the reality of the kingship or lordship of christ in all spheres of our life you see we have to see the gospel not as a story that happened 2000 years ago but as an overarching story of what god has done is doing now and will continue into future we need to know that this is a story that you and i have been called into now when you embrace the story line of the kingdom of god and make it your own you're constantly reminded of who we are who we are and why are we here only then we can fully grasp the radical teachings of jesus radical forgiveness radical love and radical grace and redeem through them in our postmodern world when the mainstream society is straying far away from the absolute truth we who claim to be the children of god have to find our place within the biblical narrative and make the kingdom of god visible to others around us john calvin said this is the task of the church make the invisible kingdom visible to the world this is the imperative need of the hour and only then we can even think of rebuilding our foundation now when we live in the reality of the kingdom of god we have to follow our king's commandments we have to be doers of the word this is not a choice that's a default setting it is said that obedience is the dominant expression of a heart in pursuit of its reality in search of its reality is any reality better than the kingdom of god i thank the collective wisdom of the women of vanuatu who are urging us today to pay heed to jesus's words spoken at the conclusion of the sermon on the mount therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock coming back to obedience we often attribute obedience as a positive trait in children we all take pride when we are told that our child or grandchild is a very obedient child but when we all grow up when we all become adults when we become assertive independent strong willed and when we have a very strong understanding of our individual rights then obedience slowly gets brushed to the side because now we have our own justifications for all our thoughts words and actions we really have to reclaim our understanding of christian obedience it is not blind duty it is not soul stifling legalism it is the outpouring of our love for god obedience is the concrete expression of our love for god jesus said anyone who loves me will obey my teaching but sadly in today's world all of us are educated way above the level of our obedience as rightly pointed out 
by Mark Patterson, an American pastor and author. We don't need to talk more, learn more, or know more. We just need to do more, be doers of the word. Patterson goes on to say that our life should translate scripture into a language that those around us can read. God doesn't just want to speak to you through the scripture. He wants to speak through you. He wants to write his story through your life. Yes, the story of the kingdom of God that Jesus came to initiate and willfully establish when he returns. And the beautiful thing about obedience is that it carries with it manifold blessings from God. Author and missionary Elizabeth Elliot lays out Christian obedience in this manner. You hear the word of God, do the word of God, and through this come to know God more and more. Jesus said, those who accept my commandments and obey them, I will reveal myself to each of them. If that's not a blessing, what else can be? All of us who pray for God's blessings, you yearn for God's blessings. We need to live a life of simple obedience. But God knows we are not perfect. The moments when I have failed in hearing the word of God and obeying the word of God are the moments when the gospel spoke to me the most. For our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did far more than just set an example of perfect obedience. His perfect obedience led him to the point of death. His perfect obedience led him to the cross, where he not only wiped away our sins, but also imputed his righteousness onto us. By the one man's obedience, many will be appointed righteous. Romans 5, 19. How then can we not respond in loving obedience to the commandments of the king who shed his blood for us? How then can we not make his story our own? In conclusion, in this postmodern world where absolute truth is rejected, where there's no objective basis of morality, we, the children of God, have an immense responsibility to rebuild the foundation, not for our, uh, ourselves, but for the generations to come. We should live our lives within the highest level of meaning by embracing the story of the kingdom of God and make it a reality in our lives and for others around us. We, the children of the mighty king, who has authority in heaven and earth, should enthrone him in all aspects of our daily lives. Of the pure love, let us be eager to hear the word of God, and do the word of God, and through this come to God, know God more and more, and be a blessing to the world. I would like to end this message by reading the quote by Elizabeth Elliot. The fact that I'm a woman does not make me a different kind of Christian, but the fact that I am a Christian makes me a different kind of woman. Thank you all for your attention. God bless you all. Thank you, Annie. Thank you so much. Um, now, um, Jesus, you are my firm foundation. Junior Choir of Seattle Martima Church affirms their faith and sings with joy. Jesus, you're my friend.
firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Your word is faithful. Your word is faithful. Mighty in power. Mighty in power. God will deliver me. God will deliver me. Of this I'm sure. Of this I'm sure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. 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 Beautifully done by our children. Um, now, the Southeast Region Center B churches, Christos Martima Church, Ascension Martima Church, and Martima Church Philadelphia present before you a dance skit highlighting the types of violence faced by women globally and in Vanuatu, written and choreographed by them. Enjoy. COVID-19, ஒரு பகர்ச்சி வியாதியாயி லோகாரோக்கிய சங்கடன பிரக்கியாவிச்ச ஈ காலகட்டதில் அரிஞ்யோ அரியாதியோ நம்ம் விஸ்மிரிச்சு போய்டுள்ள ஒரு பகர்ச்சி வியாதி அதவ பேண்டமிக்கான சரிகள்கும் பெண்குட்டிகள்கும் எதிராயி ஆகோல அதிஷ்திதமாயி நடக்கன்ன அக்ரமணங்கள் படனங்கள் நம்மே ஓர்மிப்பிக்கின்னது ஈ வர்ஷம் World Day of Prayer திரிந்திருத்திரிக்கின்னது வனுவாற்று என்ன ராஜி மானல்லோ ஈ ராஜித்திலே சரிகளில் அருபது சதமானம் ஆலுகள் கார்கிக பிடனத்தினும் முப்பத்தி மூந்து சதமான சரிகள் லைங்கிக அதிக்ரமங்கள்கும் இறிபத்தியுந்து சதமான ஒரு கொரியுக்ராவிலுடை லோக மெம்பாடும் சரிகள்க்கு நேரே நடத்தப்படுந்தா அக்கணவங்களையும் அதிசீவனத்தேயும் நாங்கள் அவதரிப்பிக்கின்னும். We are the women of Vanuatu. The women of a country that stands up. We stand up together, regardless of whether we speak French or English. From Port Villa to the Ambi Islands, from the lowlands to the tallest of the banyan trees, we stand strong. We stand up against the hurricanes, the earthquakes, and all natural disasters that try to strike us down. Like the megapode who bury their eggs in volcanic soil, Even in the ashes of despair, our people will rise. But although we are a country that stands up, women that stand up, what do we stand on? There was once a small village full of beautiful women, both big and small. And these women would smile, <laughs> and laugh and dance the morning away, shouting praises out loud. But on their journeys home, they would hide their sorrows in silence. Those smiles and laughter would disappear, fearing what would be behind the door. In the lowlands of the plains, a woman wept as her husband, praised as a brave and noble man of the village, struck her 
with his noble hand. In the forest of the village was a traveling woman, alone and hiding in the boughs of a tree, in fear of being sexualized, merely seen as an object, owned rather than loved. And the last is a small child, merely at the age of 12. But she has been given the responsibility of a wife, instructed to leave her home behind with a man she barely knows. Now, her husband. These women who smile in the morning, but cry rivers of tears in the evening, needed to be seen, needed to be heard. They needed to be loved. And they were, as the women the next day in their morning circle embraced them, mourned with them, and held them close. They prayed on their knees and bowed before them, speaking to their Maker, their Father, their Lord. And slowly, with the power of the group, the noble husband was held accountable. The traveling woman had friends to protect her and give her a home. The child was given a second chance at her childhood. We are the women of Vanuatu, the women of a country that stands up, and we stand upon the foundation of God. When we struggle with domestic violence in our homes, we will stand upon the foundation of God. When we struggle with sexual violence in our communities, we will stand upon the foundation of God. When we fight against the injustices of child brides, we will stand upon the foundation of God. God is our rock, our foundation, and our cornerstone. We will never be pushed down. We, we are, the are the women, women of Vanuatu, Vanuatu and, and we stand, stand upon, upon the foundation, foundation of God. The foundation of God is the foundation of the foundation of Matthew chapter 8, Paramel Adisana Peta Bida Ye the Pradisantigalim Adijibikinadai Nam Vaikino Christuagan the Paramel Adisana Pedambor Adijivanum Sadimana Namukum Unijera Kaigal Korkam Christuvil Namade Adisaningle Pania Adijivanathanai Porada So very proud of you, young ladies, um, for that beautiful choreography. Now, Mrs. Lena Thomas, Vice President of National Council of Churches in India, brings greetings from NCCI, and she will be briefly sharing her knowledge of World Day of Prayer celebrations in India. Lena. Right, Reverend Dr. Isaac Mark Philexinos the Diocesan Bishop of the Delhi, North America, Europe Diocese, the distinguished guests, revered clergy and Basquiamos, and all the beloved in Christ who are participating in this webinar. Greetings to all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for allowing into hearts and to the virtual media space. From a rich fora of orators, we heard about the theme, 
and its importance and significance in life and the emphasis for joining together on this particular day, forgetting our denominational constrictions. Further, we have reached the end of the program and my slot is limited, which make me leave aside all sagacities and ornamentations. I'm keeping simple and small. At the outset, let me bring greetings from the organization I represent, the National Council of Churches in India sends its greetings and warm wishes on this occasion to the ecumenical organizers of this function, especially the Martoma Suvishesha Sevika Sangam of North America, Europe Diocese of the Malangara Martoma Syrian Church. And I also congratulate all the leaders who have taken pain to organize this program. NCCI, the National Council of Churches in India, is an ecumenical community comprising of 14 million members from 30 Protestant and Orthodox churches, 17 regional councils, and 25 other church-related ecumenical bodies rooted in gospel as revealed a person, life, and work of Jesus Christ. In India, the National Council plays the facilitating role in the observance of the World Day of Prayer. NCCI coordinates with all member churches and give all kind of help to celebrate the World Day of Prayer in a meaningful way. The women in India are very enthusiastic about the celebration. As we all know that India is a country of diversity in culture, language, practices, and lifestyle. So to reach the uh, observance of World Day of Prayer to the grassroots level, what NCCI do is we translate the order of worship to different languages with the help of women secretaries of women's fellowship or able leaders of different churches or denominations from different states. So it comes different languages, you know. For the past 50 years, the women's wing of NCCI has united women from women's fellowship of member churches to engage in World Day of Prayer and reflect the faith in action. Before I conclude my remarks, let me remind everybody that we have to thank God Almighty for the opportunity of Indian ecumenical women leaders to be theme writers for four years. That is in 1932, in 1947, in 1954, and in 1985. Now, up to 2026, the slots for the theme writing has been allocated. So we all have to realize that it is now 40 years since Indian reflection or thoughts could be penned for the World Day of Prayer. We, the Indian ecumenical women, wherever we are, should strive to come forward and bring the Indian ecumenical flag to great heights. I once again thank and congratulate the organizers for giving me this opportunity. May God bless us all. Amen. Thank you, Lena. Thank you so much for joining uh, from India. Um, now, Senior Choir of Seattle Martama Church brings you this beautiful presentation of the hymn, In Christ Alone. Enjoy. Jesus, the name above all names. He holds our past, our present, and our future, and in Him alone is our hope found. We, the women of the Seattle Martima Church Choir, present to you, In Christ alone my hope is found. In 
was awesome. Thank you, Senior Choir of Seattle Martha Church for that beautiful rendition. Now, as we are coming to the close of this program, it is my responsibility to offer um, words of thanks. As Sam 91 states, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of the marvelous things you have done. Along with the psalmist, I can say, indeed, God has done great things. I can say with my whole heart that he is sufficient for all our needs and he has provided. I can testify to this program being a product born out of pure, of a pure faith journey in, the COVID, in this COVID era. In every twist and turn, God's presence and guidance was with us. Thank you, Father, for your provision for showing us the way and providing help along the way with the right people at the right time. All praise and honor to your mighty and glorious name. 
There is a phrase I'm sure everyone knows. It takes a village to raise a child. In this case, it's not a child that has been raised, but awareness regarding World Day of Prayer, women's struggles, whether it is in the small island country of Vanuatu or anywhere else in the world. The village behind it and me is you. I hope it bears fruit in the form of faith turned into action. Also, as the saying goes, no man is an island. When we achieve, we usually do so because others have helped. There is a big group of people that are behind bringing this program to its form as you have witnessed it. Starting from the leadership for the, to the audience, starting from the conception of the idea to the last person who helped to implement it, every person is equally important. As you know, if there is no audience, the program has no significance. I must start with our president, right Reverend Dr. Isaac Mar Philoxenos, our dear Philoxenos Tirmeni. Any ideas or plans we bring to him, Tirmeni will always th think through and will give us appropriate guidance. Tirmeni has always been supportive of all activities of Seviga Sankham, as Sri Bhachan said. Even when Tirmeni was in India, busy with Mairaman Convention, Synod meetings, et cetera, Tirmeni always found time to return calls and answer emails, allowing us to make plans freely. I am deeply appreciative of Tirmeni's guidance and his unrelenting support. Tirmeni changed his plans to be with us for most of this meeting, even in the midst of conflicting priorities. We are thankful for Tirmeni's prayers and presence. To our distinguished guests today, Andrea Misko, Executive Coordinator of World Day of Prayer USA, Rosangela Oliveria, Executive Director, World Day of Prayer International Committee, Lena Thomas, Vice President of NCCI, and Mrs. Neeti Prasad, Board Member of World Day of Prayer USA, one of our own. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for accepting our invitation and bringing us greetings from the World Day of Prayer representing different parts of the world. We are deeply grateful. Dr. Annie Philip Jacob, our speaker today from Washington Martima Church, came highly recommended. Thank you, Annie, for representing young women of faith and speaking to us from the word. May God continue to guide you in your faith life and bless you to be a role model to your peers. Diocese and Seviga Sangam Council, the backbone behind all Diocese and Seviga Sangam activities was 100% supportive and were behind this program coordination. Reverend Shibi Varghese attended all our planning meetings and provided valuable suggestions and guidance throughout the planning and implementation. In the midst of Lent prayer sessions and meetings and other responsibilities, Ajahn found time to think through the planning of this program. Reverend Ajay Abraham has become a great guide and support for us. Ajahn attended all our planning meetings as well even in the midst of moving and shifting and through the tough phase of getting acclimated to the new responsibilities and home. Reverend Manoj Adikala, though, uh, though moved on with the new and greater responsibilities is always available for us with help and support. Mrs. Jolie Babu, assembly member and Nobi Baiju, treasurer, helped coordinate and support, supported the World Day of Program plans. Thank you all of you for your valuable support. We started as a three person group to plan this World Day of Prayer program with Mrs. Nirmala Abraham and Mrs. Neeti Prasad and added on a core group of exceptionally talented and resourceful women, including Mrs. Jensi Anish, Mrs. Nino Thomas, Mrs. Liz Johnson and Mrs. Liba Verghese. Also in our subsequent planning meetings, we selected coordinators for each of these programs. You must have seen that the participants of each program was added at the end of each program slide since we don't have time to acknowledge each one by name. Worship coordination was done by Mrs. Jolie Babu, Sony Binu Kora from Canada, Mrs. Jesse Phillip, Detroit, and Mrs. Roshan, Roshan Abraham from California. 
Choir coordinators were Mrs. Choshama Abraham and Mr. Vergis Chako from Long Island, Long Island Martama Church, Mrs. Nobi Baiju, who coordinated the virtual choir, Mrs. Liba Vergis from Seattle Junior and Senior Choirs. Narrative choreography, the graceful picturization of women's issues written and presented by the young women in Philadelphia, women in Philadelphia region, coordinated by Mrs. Jensi Anish Kajima. Dissemination of information to agents and Muskiamos groups was done by Mrs. Nino Thomas. Monologues, the women's stories were coordinated by Mrs. Mariama Abraham, Lalita. Thank you, Lalita, for volunteering. Our biggest challenge was the technical aspect of running a mixed live and recorded program. Thanks to the team we were able to assemble, including Roshan Alexander from New York, the man, the, the, the master brain behind the scene, behind the screen, and Mrs. L Mrs. Mariama Abraham, Lalita, who assembled, sorted, and helped pull together all these videos and um, the, the live programs together, a job no one else really wanted. Um, and also with assistance from Nikhil Philip, who is supporting them behind the scenes. We were able to pull this program together. Thank you for sharing our vision of a program of this dimension and for being so incredibly supportive. You understood what we were trying to achieve and you helped make it possible. Your generous gifts of time, I know sleepless nights were involved and expertise is deeply appreciated. Mrs. Liz Johnson, Staten Island, Martha Church and Christy Matthew from Christos Martha Church assisted us to put the promotional video that you all enjoyed together. Thank you. And thank you to Jensi Kachima, Mrs. Jensi Anish for assistance with that as well. Alan and Annette Matthew from Seattle, the most humble and creative couple that I have the honor to know, helped us with the introductory video editing and choir videos. Thank you so much. Shaji Ramavaram, one of the media persons for the diocese, helped us to pull together the information for the media. Thank you, Shaji. Mr. Jacob Joseph from St. Matthews, Canada, provided us with ideas and a design for the slides. Thank you, Tamijan. About 125 people in front of the screen and many more behind the scenes. Awesome work. Thank you. I'm grateful to the leaders at the regional center and unit levels, including my own parish, Martima Church, Philadelphia. To everyone who joined from near and far, supporting our Women's Fellowship and World Day of Prayer, thank you from the bottom of my heart. If I called out all those who prayed, shared, and supported this program, we would be here for quite some time. Instead, I will simply say, thank you. You know who you are. William Arthur Ward once said, and I quote, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. And 1 Thessalonians 5.18 also instructs, instructs us, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So thank you. I'm deeply grateful for everyone that supported me in these past few months. A special shout out to Mrs. Nirmala Abraham who was with me from beginning till the end. Thank you, thank you all. Now we will close with prayer and benediction by Reverend Mano Jalikula. Let's bow our heads in prayer. O oh God of people and nations, we pause at the close of this meeting to acknowledge again your sovereignty over our lives and our country. Gracious God, we thank you and worship you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us, on our families, friends, providing us home, food, and water to drink. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to come together for prayer and worship. Thank you for reminding us to build our houses on a strong foundation. Thank you, Master, for helping us to be a part of the World Day of Prayer and to be enriched by the faith experiences of the people of Vanuatu. Quite often, 
we become just programmers and presenters instead teach us O lord to take up the burdens of other people and pray for them give us the wisdom to discern the truth and help us O lord to live a life that is worth pleasing and acceptable to you we offer ourselves to be a house where you can dwell by the power of your word transform our lives and our nations make us like a household of justice and peace we thank you lord for all the initiatives of the world day of prayer committee and for enabling the martama sushesha sevya sangam of the rise of north america and europe of the martama church to be a part of it in organizing this event let our endeavors and prayers be for the betterment of the people of vanuatu and for the extension of your kingdom this we ask in the precious name of the lord and savior jesus christ i mean mm-hmm. the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face towards you and give you peace may the strength of god sustain us may the power of god preserve us may the hand of god protect us may the way of god direct us may the love of god be with us forever Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with us and with the people of Vanuatu now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you everyone who joined who participated and joined. Thank you Manojan for the Thank you. <laughs> Let me be safe.